It was not King Midas, but Shakespeare, who coined the phrase about all that glitters. But don't be fools and rush to the end of the rainbow. Mine this video for all 50 ways to spend gold in D&D. Let's rock. Hi, Bob here, and welcome to Bob World Builder, where we learn how to have more fun playing D&D together. So hit that subscribe button for weekly DM guides, tips, news, and reviews. Now I know what you're thinking. I did not just list every piece of equipment in the player's handbook and call it 50 ways to spend gold. I actually have 50 categories split into three sections, and we're gonna dive right in with the most mundane, everyday expenses. Basically, all the stuff that you and I spend a lot of money on, but your PCs usually don't, because they have a feature that takes care of it, because there aren't rules for it, or because we're playing a fantasy game and don't necessarily want to think about all this stuff. But here we go. Number one, shelter. So I love the outdoors, but I definitely don't feel like I'm at my max hit points with all my spell slots after sleeping on the ground. Especially if it's hot or humid or cold and rainy, and I doubt your party even has a tent. So consider redefining a long rest to require a comfortable night's sleep, probably at an inn. But your ranger or characters who grew up in the wilderness are a-okay. Speaking of those outlanders, food. As written, characters with the outlander background automatically find food and fresh water for themselves and up to five other people each day, as long as it's available. And that's too good. Instead, you could have that max number of people equal their survival skill bonus, and or have them make a check with advantage to find it over the course of an hour or two. And they're probably just walking around, so give your party the chance to buy some cheap horses or tame some cool wild animals and sweeten the deal by making mounted travel be like three times faster than walking. But now they have to find or buy food for their mounts too. And what about clothing? Adventurers are living outside, constantly being attacked, yet their clothes never wear out. They should have to wash, repair, or replace their clothing pretty often. And your party may not have a house, but they would still need stuff like cookware and soap for life on the road. Speaking of soap, bathhouses are a thing that your setting should have in big enough towns that still don't have running water, so your dirty vagabond adventurers can occasionally clean themselves and stay healthy. And when was the last time one of your PCs sprained their ankle, broke a collarbone, or even caught a cold? Medicine isn't free, and if they don't have a cleric, they may need to hire one. Now, unfortunately for Barty McFly, Bard College tuition is not free either, and that NPC who gave them a loan wants their money back with interest. Of course, the government wants a piece too, so your PCs may have to pay taxes or at least dues for some kind of adventuring license or guild membership, because, as my fiancé put it in this month's Patreon podcast episode, if your world doesn't have a fantasy IRS, it's not real enough. Link in the description if you want to check that out. And retirement. Unless your PCs are planning to die on one of these adventures, they should be stocking away some money for when they're no longer fit to run around slaying monsters. Then, if they save up way more than they need, your party might be in the market for our next level of ways to spend gold, luxury expenses. AKA the stuff lots of people spend their money on whether or not they can really afford it. Like number 12, fancy shelter. Sure, that humble cottage is in your party's range, but why not splurge on the villa in the countryside? Or fancy food, create some exotic delicacies for your world that come at ridiculous prices because they're extremely rare or they can only be crafted by the finest chefs in the land. Fancy transportation. This is where they buy a well-trained griffin, a nice boat, or even an airship. Go nuts! Oh, and they'll need overpriced clothing to keep up appearances, or maybe just hire a stylist to take care of this for them. And probably a jeweler to turn their many gems that they found into something fashionable and fabulous. Then why not commission a custom portrait to adorn their sitting room and buy a bunch of books to go along with the art and make sure everyone knows they're intelligent and cultured. Perhaps even buying some exotic pets or huge monsters to train with. And if they can't quite afford monsters, they can probably hire a personal trainer to spar with. 
and they would definitely hire people to cook and clean and take care of their animals and their properties. Maybe even bards and minstrels to replay their fantastic tales of adventure, or they would go to the theater or the arena in the best seats available. But hopefully the arena doesn't have them gambling away all their hard-earned loot. It would be much better if they donated some of it to causes they believe in, and adventurers with any amount of wealth can give a little bit. In fact, they'll probably have family members and friends, or even children they can support. And whether or not they're directly supporting others, it's nice just to buy people gifts, and treat yourself once in a while. So, for the coolest way to spend your gold, I recommend accessories from this video's sponsor, Paladin Roleplaying. Not a paid promotion, but Neil from Paladin Roleplaying generously sent me a bunch of their products to share with you. As always, I only promote stuff I genuinely like, I give my honest opinion, and I know you're going to love this stuff as much as I do. So there are affiliate links down in the description so you can check them out and support this community. First, these antique gold coins. Each one is an inch and a half in diameter. They weigh about as much as a metal D20. They have a detailed, ancient-looking dragon head on one side and a paladin shield on the back. And the coins are actually marketed as a D2, which is exactly why I'm happy to have them, for those epic pass-fail moments like death saving throws. Just think about leaving your character's fate up to the toss of a coin. That is brilliant. And personally, I would have liked a little more shine so it looks more golden, but it's very nice. They're indestructible, like you cannot destroy this thing, so you're going to have it forever. So this, my friend, is how you invest in gold. But this, if you noticed hanging out over here, is the best. Durable, canvassy like bag with a complete set of polyhedral rosewood dice. Look at those edges. That is a thing of beauty, my friend. So they're sharp, they're legible, they're light. You know, as much as I like the weight of a metal dice, these are just it for me now. One minor issue, the four on this D8 is slightly off center. Overall, they're beautiful. I highly recommend you check out Paladin Roleplaying and tell Neil I sent you. Really, he was great to work with. And for now, let's get back to the final section of this list, adventurer expenses. Some of these categories are certainly things you're familiar with. Weapons, armor, adventuring gear, like ropes and torches, tool sets, which are a little underrated. Xanathar's Guide to Everything has an inspiring section on what these kits can actually contain and be used for. For example, gear maintenance. Knock out the dents in your helmet, oil up those leathers, or make your own custom gear. Forge the katana you've always wanted, or that small and light buckler shield, or spiked armor for your hippogriff mount. Or augment your gear. Have your arrowhead silvered, or encrust the hilt of that sword with gems. Perhaps magical gemstones to enchant your weapon with an extra damage type and speed up your combat like I talk about in this video. And while you're at it, the wizard can craft their own spell scrolls, and the cleric can finally learn how to brew up some healing potions. These consumable items often make better treasure than gold because they are immediately useful to the party. Likewise, that diamond you put in your sword could also be used to resurrect someone with a revivify spell, and this list would not be complete without magic items. Even in a low magic setting, there can be one well-defended vault of magical goods owned by an emperor or retired adventurer, so the party has a place where they can buy some magic items and sell the ones they just can't find a use for. Or if you're totally against magic items, you should drop in poison. This way, your rogue won't have to worry about inexplicably missing an attack roll against a sleeping enemy. Just put some serpent venom in their food, and you're good to go. But wait, they never took proficiency in the poisoner's kit? Your PCs can also buy books or hire instructors to gain new proficiencies for armor, weapons, tools, instruments, skills, or even languages. This makes for a great downtime activity, and why not have them put those new skills to the test by entering an arena tournament, a carnival pie-eating contest, or maybe there's just a city in your setting that requires payment for entry. Regarding this kind of payment, somehow we haven't talked about bribes yet. 
Whether it's getting someone to talk or keeping them quiet, bribes are a great tool in any adventurer's toolkit. Then, whether through bribes or more legitimate channels, your party could buy a business or start their own. A tavern, a farm, a brewery, a bakery, a D&D YouTube channel. Yeah, in case you don't know, this is my job right now while I'm laid off because of COVID, so if you're finding this video valuable, give it a thumbs up, share it with your D&D group, and let me know in the comments what's the weirdest thing your character has spent their gold on. It really does help. Thank you. Now. I love it when adventurers actually build a home in the setting. It could be a wizard's tower, a druid grove, a monk temple, or even a castle with their own dungeon. Or they can open a school, an animal shelter, or an orphanage for all of those other would-be adventurers who lost their parents to goblin raids. And if your players really want something like this in the world, it's usually best to let them do the world building, which is something I talk about in this video. If they have enough land, your characters can be lords that show up in your next campaign. And why stop there? Buying more land is much easier than fighting for it, and then the money stays in the kingdom you are now building. And with enough gold, enough power, your character can become the next big bad evil guy! And hey, wait a minute, I guess that's only 49 things. Well, what are you gonna do? Hire a lawyer? <clears throat> no, yeah, just, just kidding guys, please definitely don't actually sue me. So remember to check out Paladin Roleplaying and my Patreon podcast episode about spending gold to hear the weird things that Grace and I have spent money on in D&D. Thank you Gene, Andy, Unicorns Pudding, Ryan, and Matt for joining Patreon this week, and keep building.